Sharpness, Dynamic Range, F2.8, 1.4, G Master. Is that it? No. In between the body and mind, osmosis is always going on. Where no one can see, the hard rain is hitting on my body. Slave and meat, it's already happening. Arm your mentality. How's it going people? Welcome back to another new episode of The Gears and thank you for tuning in again. So first of all, I made this short film with only Sony a7 III and Sony 24-100 5mm f4. I mean this shot with f4, $1000 lens, not G Master, G lens. So what do you before you deep dive into this review? Oh by the way, of course, today what I'm going to talk about is Sony 24-200 5mm f4 G lens. Okay, from now, I'm going to focus on three major points. First, the look, how it looks and how I feel about it. Second is autofocus, how fast is this? And third is image quality, how sharp is this? Okay, first, the look. So this lens looks pretty much same as other G Master lenses, except probably the body is plastic, not like G Master metallic look. So you can feel expensive, cold, luxury, uh, metallic, feel on this lens. But it looks pretty cool. And it's much lighter and smaller even though this is f4 and 24-200 5mm. This is very huge. I mean you can carry around this 24-200 5mm with this size and weight. But it's still G lens. The build quality is amazing. Zoom and aperture ring are very smooth. It doesn't get that long until 70mm but when it's over 70mm it gets long. So make sure to set around 50mm when you put it on gimbal to make it stable. I tried it on this short film and the balance was perfect. And when it comes to functions, this has AF, MF switch and focus hold and optical steady shot. Yes, this has image stabilization in lens. This is also huge. So overall, this build quality isn't that different from G Master. Well, it's smaller and lighter, maybe even better. Next is autofocus. Well, this is why I love Sony lenses. Always autofocus is so reliable and fast. So this time autofocus speed was 0.5 second average. Okay, it was 24mm. Of course, it's fast. Is that what you're saying? Okay, for you, this is 105mm. Huh, pretty much same speed. Surprise. Do we still have anything to talk about this? Okay, the AF sound pretty quiet. How does it do in detail shot? Well, still fast enough. And also, focus move is very natural and smooth. Huh, honestly, I don't have anything to complain about this, so next. Okay, last one is image quality. Okay, first, focal length. Well, like I said, it's so huge that you can cover from 24 to 105 mil in one lens. You can do 24 mil wide shot and 50 mil standard focal length shot and 105 mil uh, telephoto shot. The minimum focus distance is 38 centimeters, but as you can see, if you shoot with 105 mil, you can get this crispy detail shot. Next, sharpness. Okay, first, I gotta say something. Don't be shocked. This lens is not that sharp. Relax. Relax. Don't be scared. Don't close the window. Don't make me small right here. Come back here. I'm saying this lens is not sharp in a good way. The sharpness itself is very average, very normal. We've had better. What I mean by not sharp here is image is soft and mild and it's very unique. Lines and edges are very crispy and clean and it's high resolution. But overall image is very soft and mild. It makes me kind of nostalgic. You know what I mean? Nostalgic. Please, I love this balance so much. It's just like a classic film with modern technology, which is great. And I shot one photo that can represent the uniqueness and personality of this lens, like this. The water is very smooth, we can feel its softness through this image, but also you can see the detail of bubbles. Just lovely. Next, color and dynamic range. Wow, it's so colorful, but it's not vivid or strongly saturated. What I want to say is, Okay, imagine you have a palette in your hand and you're about to draw. So now you wanna pick some colors. Wow, look at those. You have plenty kinds of colors. It's so colorful. That. Well, my point is there are many colors that you can play with. The image is depicted so well. So you can go straight from a camera, but with some editing, 
the image will be better than what it is in real. Always many colors are a great option to have. And about dynamic range, it's a little bit hard to go without editing. Because I feel dynamic range is not that good. Especially when it's backlight, either of shadow or highlight is crashed or blown out. So we gotta do some editing to recover them. But after that, image came back alive. Especially this shot, so nostalgic. I love it. Nostalgic. This is a keyword of today. And one tip right here. If you shoot with this lens, I recommend that you close the aperture to like a over 10. That way the sharpness is just right and colors are very beautiful. The style, genre, is totally opposite of Sigma. And this way you can enjoy some soft and nostalgic cinematic photography. Next, portrait. Well, I'm not a portrait type of person, so I'm going through it quickly. Well, as I can see, the skin tone is very creamy. I remember this day had a very harsh sunlight, but highlight is not blown out. Very good light on the skin. And I think color is natural. Basically, it's yellow and a little bit magenta. My real skin was depicted so well. Because this is not a sharp lens, portrait is also soft and mild. And nice bouquet. Well, this is all I can say. So last thing I'm gonna talk about is low light ability, which is biggest issue in this review. So all of you know, this is F4. Well, somebody's screaming like, I want more than F4. I get it. I really get it. Only this, only this F4 is making me stay at other f2.8 lens so this shot it seems solid but it was shot on a set with lighting so that means if you have a proper shooting environment this f4 doesn't make you sad that bad but when you shoot outside like street photography and filmmaking it's really dark you lose bunch of information in shadow but those street lights are very beautiful so definitely we gotta recover the shadow in editing but we need to be humble when we boost exposure and shadow because it gets noisy yeah but even though it's at 4 this lens is still in a game in a city. But this is limit. Don't go and not supposed to go. Like in woods and nature, no light, no power. This is it. This is what this lens is capable of. Conclusion. Okay, conclusion is considering all aspects of this lens, this lens is wallet friendly G Master. I'll explain. So a lot of people choose Sigma or Tamron 2470mm over 2470G Master because of price. 2470G Master is over $2,000. Way expensive. Well, if you have budget enough, go with it. But it's not that easy, you know? So many people tend to choose Sigma 2470mm according to views of my video. Wait a second. Don't you forget one lens? This lens, 24-105mm. F4? What? It's not enough? Because it's F4? Way too fast to make a decision. This lens has beautiful image which makes you nostalgic. Colors are so juicy. And the image is so mild. Classic. It reminds me of G Master. But it's F4. On the other hand, Sigma is so crispy and so sharp and it's F2.8. But the color is just average, normal. It's just like a go-to lens. Which one do you choose? This time I borrowed 2400 mm from my friend and when I tried it for the first time, I seriously considered to sell my Sigma 24-70mm and get this lens. I just like the image so much. But I have so many times to shoot in a low light situation and product photography and videography. I need a sharpness in f2.8 and go to commercial look for my works. So I decided not to. But this 24-200 mm is that great. It was shaking my mind so hard. Almost. So if you're not like me, this lens is officially rival against Sigma 24-70mm. You like G Master look? You want it, but you can't? This is your friend. It'll take care of you nicely. This is wallet friendly G Master. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this lens, don't hesitate to leave the comment below. And if you have any requests for next gears, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is very much it. And thank you for watching this video. If you like this gear, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode.